great afternoon and a wonderful evening. We're going to learn, we're listening to the transformation of two leaders. One has grown his own business, his own company, and successfully managing it as an entrepreneur, sold it, and then continues to work in corporates and also took to meditation quite a bit and then been promoting and practicing teaching meditation. And another leader at IBM being very successfully practicing mindfulness meditation for a long time and yet also be responsible for this practice. So we have these two leaders sharing with us today, dear friends, talking about purpose of life. We understood various ways to, to tune into a purpose. Even that manifestation that we are doing, the manifestation, the visualization that we have learned is also a way, is also a way to identify if something is of importance to us or not important to us. Going into the flow is physically, visualization is of doing the same emotionally. So when we take up something and we put it into our visualization and see where we end up, whether we have those feelings sustained for a few days, where the feelings that we are bringing up or the emotions we're bringing up in our visualization is sustaining or is it slowly tapering off? This is another great tool to utilize, to go into meditations and then go through a visualization, put it in because you're not sure, but you know that there is some interest. There is an interest and it's a great way to go into the visualization because you are anyway manifesting, dreaming about it. And when you dream about it, the more it is close to our heart, our consciousness, the more you're going to bring up the feelings. The more you're able to bring up the feelings and sustain them day after day after day, then you know that this is dear to you. And then it goes on into aligning to it. So having it in our visualizations and then taking a small task out of that towards going into the flow is a great combination to drive towards our purpose for the then time. It absolutely bring, brings about a lot of clarity. And then we have meditation with it. But the bottom line absolutely is that we want to align to what we love. We want to align to that thing which gives us contentment. It has to be a question for everybody. If meditation is not leading towards truly expressing what that I want, then in the long term, any benefit that we gain cannot be sustained. If meditation does not lead towards truly expressing what you want and then truly aligning to what you want him to do that gives you true happiness and contentment, then the anything that you're doing cannot be, anything that you gained as a benefit unlikely to be sustained. Ultimately, everything is psychosomatic. Whether my physical health and mental health, our emotional health, they are dependent on the psyche. The psyche, then at the end of the day, our individual consciousness has to feel contented and satisfied. We as a whole have to, the part of us as a whole has to feel that it is satisfied, contented. If so psychosomatic, a psyche is nothing but collection of our experiences, our memories, and then our state of being of our emotional body, our mind, our intellect, our individual consciousness and you know, the, the group consciousness, the universal consciousness. It's our co collection of our own version of all of them together. We gained our health, we control our anger, but the deep inside we're not happy with our job every day. We're going and then coming back because we're not still taking that action. We're not taking that action to fix that. Deep inside we're not happy at home we are doing an absolutely compromising, compromising thing. We withdraw ourselves because we concluded 
that this person or this thing is not going to change in my life, then the psyche is deep inside is not satisfied, then it psychosomatic, all the illness are psychosomatic. So the illness will have to show up in some form. It will show up. What meditation is doing is that moving us, when we intend to transform ourselves, when we intend to change, meditation is moving us from a, immediately, pretty quickly, it is moving us from a survival mode to a creative mode. It moves us from a survival mode to creative mode. That means if we are challenged with health, of, if we are challenged with some deep health issue, if we are challenged with a deep emotional issue, a relationship issue, or a business issue, or a cash flow issue, whatever that is, financial issue, meditation, what you seek is seeking you. So meditation is supporting us to move away from that survival. Because if if you are challenged with you know basic food, a basic thing, then you can't even progress, right? You can't even progress. Do your sadhana, do your practice, and make changes. Because all of that require energy. So it moves us away from the survival mode to create a mode pretty quickly with a solid synchronicity that is coming in our way, with the feelings coming out in our way to say that, do make a change, make a change. Do it differently. Don't try to do all small things, but when it comes to the big thing of whether it's job change with a draw from a business or whether it is a relationship issue that you want to fix, if you don't just, if you just don't do those things, whether you are fierce about death, then you have those things that you hold on to them then psychosomatic will have to apply. A few months later, we'll start seeing, why am I not progressing? Why is this coming back? Why is this returning back? Like anything, if you have a business and as it, it grows with a lot of interest in initial enthusiasm, and we keep getting opportunities. And if you don't use the opportunity, then our business will not grow. It'll be at point, it'll be sustained, it'll be just stagnant and then over a period of time if we don't still use the opportunity that are coming in our way then it has to go down it'll be the same thing so the point i'm saying dear friends is that we move we stick the support of moving from a survival to creation mode with a lots of positivity and then start making the real change in our life it happens and we will get that support we will get the support and most are changing but some places, it doesn't matter however tall that chain that you may see in front of you. You know, Richard Bach said, you're not given a thought unless you have the capability to implement it or experience it. You're not given a thought unless you are capable to experience it. It's, this is, look at the thought, it's so liberating. Even if I thought about it, I want to become the Prime Minister of India. It's not to be discarded. You see, that thought does not come or would not have come when you're five-year-old, when you're 10-year-old, when you're 15-year-old, when you're 20-year-old, when you're 30-year-old. It only came at a given time thinking about, hey, it'd be nice if I become that. For whatever reason, in whichever context that you thought about, a thought is not given to us unless we are ready or capable to implement. When I say the capability there is that as a consciousness, we are ready, we have evolved enough that if we want to make use of it, we can actually go forward for it. So when we are meditating, of course, these original thoughts, the creative thoughts come from inside. Hey, do something about this relationship. Don't try to be this way. Work on it. Change it. You got a question. You got to support, express. Because we're not given that thought unless we have the capability or ready or the, with the strength to implement it. Any thought, it doesn't matter. Because it's, it's just the nature of uh, reality that we are always revealed what is absolutely necessary as we are evolving, as we are a psyche, as your consciousness is developing enough that you know, we are revealed of certain things, which then, of course, you use, make use of and then expand on. So there is an original thought that's coming in from this consciousness, which is exactly what we receive. And then there is a, we develop on it through our power of mind. But there is an original thought that is we receiving, which is telling you deep inside, do this. Go and do that service work. Go and help them. You know, this long pending 
financial mesh is there between your families and then you also held on to your position, just go and release it. What's the point? You got enough, just go and then settle the matter. It's easy. Sometimes, you know, if one person lets go, things that are unnecessary, now you are working, you're now naturally you have the ability, you, you naturally you have the desire to give unconditionally. You say, okay, I'm going to relinquish my portion of it. Who, who cares? I've been taken care of, got enough. So in this case, okay, let me just give it away. At least that's going to resolve issues for everybody else. That thought could come. But they all will come. The original things will come. And then we apply, of course, our analytical or a power of conscious mind to refine it, refine it, make it aesthetic. Go into the detail and then implement it, dear friends. So we want to, as masters of meditation, we want to take conscious action, listening to our heart regularly. You know, when we are going through deep meditations, if we feel really good about doing something for somebody, we got to take action. It's not good enough to say thank you and go away. Every day, it's not good enough. If you deeply feel inside, wow, this is good. I must take it to my grandmother. I must take it to my neighbors who are suffering here. But I know they've been very aggressive. I think I should somehow find a way to talk to them and give it to them or to my colleague. You know, when we, the moment we, as part of the feeling, we get this thing that is coming deep from deep inside, we got to hold on to it. And then take an action. It's not just, it's not enough to say, just say thank you and then go away, dear friends. It's not enough. That's why, by the way, it's going to happen. The paradox is that we have to work on one side and the other side is going to happen. Both are there. Spiritual science and meditation practice is about living with paradoxes. It's going to happen, but we have to do our best. Both are there. We cannot leave it and say, when my time comes, it's going to happen. No. Sorry, when that your heart is telling you, with a feeling it's telling you, it's coming to you, then we need to take that action on it. Because that's a signal, that's a message. It's like an opportunity. That quantum field has unlimited possibilities and opportunities. And when we are with it, we access, we become open to the opportunities and possibilities. We receive them. And when we receive them, we've got to do something with them. So it's going to happen for meditators to naturally move towards helping others. But the dear friends, at the same time, we have the, we also have to work. We have to match it. The opportunities come, we have to match it. When we match it, we are progressing in an excellent pace. We are accelerating, we are contained in a sustained happiness mode continuously. So let's go into our meditation once again, dear friends. We are doing breath mindfulness meditation. Our goal is to empty the mind. When we empty our mind, when we empty those thousands of unwanted negative survival thoughts, we start gaining clarity. We start receiving original creative thoughts, original creative messages, which are going to help us move into and a higher purpose, in a higher direction. So our mind has got thousands of thoughts. And when we observe our breath, our normal natural breath, take any point in the nose, here, 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 preferably at the center of the eyebrows, and then observe your breath is going in and coming out. When we observe our breath, our mind slowly, slowly becomes empty. When we observe the breath, breath becomes lighter, shorter, mind is also becoming empty. While you're observing, there may be distractions, and so suddenly we go off into the thought. And when you recognize that you are thinking, then you gently come back to observing the breath. So during this whole process of meditation, you may be in thought, bring your observer back into the observing the breath. You'll be in observing the breath for some time. And as you observe, as you're becoming empty, there may be a place where you're completely forgotten about observing the breath and you're gone into a totally emptiness state or you have gone into your thoughts to full state where your job then is to bring yourself back to the breath again. The, the way to do this, dear friends, is the posture is simple, just the way you're sitting in the chair. Cross your feet at ankle, fingers into fingers, rest your hands comfortably in your lap, with your eyes closed, remove the specks. 
would observe our natural breath. This is the posture it's called Anapanasati or breath mindfulness meditation. Before going into this, there is a process called heart elevation. Just follow me actively. The idea of the process is to fill up our heart with an heightened emotions of love, gratitude, compassion, kindness, adventure, care, any of these emotions. Relive a moment from your life. So bring back, go back to an experience from your past. Or those of you doing manifestation, bring it up from your future. And relive that experience of caring for a child, of being in nature, or caring for your parents, any of those, and then feel that emotion of kindness, compassion, love. So that's the crux of the emotion, uh, that process, which slows our brain down to go into this breath mindfulness meditation easy. Relax yourself, dear friends. Sit comfortably. Wonderful, dear friends. Hope you enjoyed the meditation. We, we, we definitely are dropping, dropping and dropping and dropping more and more unwanted thoughts. So we have to become more and more clearer about how I want to navigate my life in this new after meditation. You know, early in the morning is a great time. At least I use the time. When I'm brushing, I'm always, when I'm bathing, I'm always receiving because that's the slowdown time and then the our consciousness is always giving post your nights processing. It is always giving, downloading. Always, all the time, utilizing that time rather than keeping mind full at that time. Giving the mind totally paying attention to it. I'm paying close attention to what is it that's coming into my mind at that time. Rather than filling it up and saying, what should I be doing today? And I'm listening actively during that whole time, from the time I wake up to the time I rest. For example, today I got some beautiful idea about this whole, some of the books that we have to publish from the foundation. Just the Buddha CEO itself is a concept that needs to be published. Until this time, I was thinking of something else. It just develops, slowly it develops as it downloads and slowly develops. It's always great, dear friends. Thank you, Arun. Thank you. Have a great